what are the prognostic factors as to say that the patient will improve or the patient will not improve. So one important one is the age. So elderly patients, elderly patients tend to have an unfavorable prognosis. What are the prognostic factors as to say that the patient will improve or the patient will not improve? So one important one is the age. So elderly patients, elderly patients tend to have an unfavorable prognosis. Also, the length of the remnant liver, it's the most important factor. So if it uh, if it's up to about 50%, well tolerated, 50 to 75%, patient might require dietary uh, manipulation. If however, if the resection is more than 75%, patient will require total prolonged parental nutrition and the patient, most of the patients tend to have what was defined as intestinal failure requiring a permanent parental nutrition. For adults, at least 100 centimeters of uh, ending stoma is required if, the, if we were to wean off the patient from parental nutrition. 60 centimeters of the intestines and as to most to an adequate length of the colon. So if we were to, if the patient is on parental nutrition, if the patient has at least 100 centimeters or 60 centimeters with colon, then there is a probability that patient can be weaned off of parental nutrition. In children, at least 40 centimeters of the intestine without ileocecal valve, 20 centimeters of the intestine with ileocecal valve. So these are the conditions. So adults, we have already have this different definitions of the short bowel syndrome type 1, type 2 and type 3 and accordingly you can take it. For children, at least 40 centimeters of the intestine without ileocecal valve and 20%, 20 centimeters of the intestine with an intact ileocecal valve. It's just for children. About the prognostic factors, distal versus proximal, jejunal resection versus ileal resection. So basically, ileum is more adaptive, bile salt and vitamin B12 also get absorbed and also we have ileal break that increases the transit time. So this is one of the proposed theories wherein the ileocecal valve, it tends to slow down the uh, movement of the foot from the uh, small bowel to the large bowel, so giving more time for absorption. Also prevents the backflow of the colonic contents back into the small bowel. So this is the main important function of the ileocecal valve and uh, as much as possible, try to preserve the ileocecal valve. So this has been asked in exams many a times, jejunum versus ileum, which one is preferred, whether it will be asked in an indirect way. The progress of this patient will be better in all of the following conditions except, so that could be in one of the questions. So it is ileal preservation as much as possible as compared to the jejunal preservation. So ileum has got a better absorptive capacity, fatty abs fat absorption will be better because of the preservation of the bile salts, vitamin B12 absorption will be there and also presence of the ileocecal valve helps in the slowing of the movement of the foot thus increasing the absorptive capacity of the small bowel. So presence of the ileocecal valve, it increases the transit time by slowing the passage of foot from the small bowel to the large bowel. It also prevents the reflux of the colonic contents back into the small bowel. So these are the two factors that have been an upcoming about the study of the short bowel syndrome. One is the post absorptive levels of the plasma citrulline. So this has been taken as an indirect evidence of the amount of the functional small bowel that is present in the patient. It's a non-protein amino acid which is produced by the intestinal mucosa and thus it provides an indication to differentiate transient from permanent small intestinal failure. So basically the levels of the plasma citrulline in the, in the body is an indirect evidence of the functional amount of the small bowel that is present in the patient and accordingly we can categorize the patient as to whether a patient would be requiring a permanent per parental nutrition or a temporary one. So other one, other important uh, point about this is a, is a GLP-2 analog teduglutide. So it was found that GLP-2 which is produced by the terminal ileum is required for the structural and intestinal functional improvement. So basically it helps in the restoration of the intestinal function and its structural integrity and the differentiation of the villi. So this has been found to be important one in uh, restoring the intestinal function and structural integrity and it has got a significant trophic and proabsorptive effects. GLP-2 that is reticlutide. So this is one of the new hormones that is being used to increase the patient's ability to absorb nutrients and to wean off the patient from total parental nutrition. <music>